silicone tools, just a few that I might be using. Um, I do like the offset palette knives and I've got some dry mark making pencils and things like that. I've got a Messermeister. So I'm gonna move my palette over to the side so I can make room for a, a first square. Okay, so now, um, now they've gone, this has gone pretty mid-tone. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff on here. And so what I might do is um, add a little bit of white to this and a little bit of black. So the first thing, the black now is nice and soft. And like, maybe I'll put a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm just gonna add little dabs here and there, just randomly. And this is a building, you're, you're kind of building a painting. You're building several paintings here at a time. And the thing about this medium is that the thicker the paint gets, you're gonna be able to do less and less. So in some ways it's kind of nice to just take your time and use this period to really explore both your materials, uh, like dry media, wet media, cold wax, your colors on um, pigments and all that, as well as your tools. And not be in a big hurry to get gloppy and thick because as soon as you do that, you're not gonna be able to do as much. See, like I can experiment with this tool and do things like that and get a mark, which I find interesting. So I'm not gonna be in a big hurry. I wanna keep my surface kind of thin to start out with because I know that uh, it's not hard to go thick, but it's gonna be a great learning experience if you kind of just take things sort of slow and see how far you can go keeping your layers relatively thin in the beginning. And what we're doing now is we're, you know, we're still, we're playing definitely, but as we play, we might come across building some sort of a beginning of a composition that we really like. So you put it on like this thickly, experiment with taking it off. So you put it on again and you can take it off. And when you take it off, some still is behind, but that is, getting to know transparency. So what we're doing this entire time, which what I'd like you to do is focus on as much contrast as possible. So thick and thin, busy and calm, curvilinear, rectilinear, textured and not textured, because there's so much opportunity to do that when you don't have a lot of gloppy paint. Um, here. Now I only have a limited palette, so as far as warm and cool goes, that is coming from these pastels I used. So warm and cool is kind of out of the picture if you're doing black and white, but everything else, light and dark, um, again, I've got a little sheet here, pattern and solid, detailed and sloppy, high sat, low sat, again, that's color, but opaque and transparent, you know, loud, this would be like a loud mark. So again, move your tool around and take your time. Um, practice with your tools, putting it on and taking it off, putting it on and taking it off or putting it on and making some sort of a pattern like that. Because why not? Why not use this time to learn about your materials? You're making observations. You are not thinking. There's a big difference between thinking and worrying about, is my painting looking good? We're not doing any of that. That is definitely not part of this process at all. So a lot of things that I will do to help me with thinking about contrast is to simply ask, what don't I have? Because what you don't have is the contrast of what's already there. So if, if this were super dark, what I wouldn't have is super light. And if I have a lot of curvilinear stuff, I'd say, well, what don't I have? Well, I don't have a lot of rectilinear. And then that's where this comes into play, it's this little edge here, that's rectilinear. Um, feel free to use a ruler. So I'm gonna just grab, you can clean off your tools with a little palette knife and put the paint back if you want. You can always use a ruler. How would you use a ruler? Any dry make, uh, mark making tool works, obviously. And, um, you know, the thing about using a ruler is that you do get a very rectilinear line. And that can feel really good, especially when you have a lot of curvilinear things going on. And you're not, you, again, you're playing. You're playing with, in this case, you're playing with a ruler. 
you're exploring what rectilinear feels like. And, you know, depending on how much stuff you have on here, it may or may not show, but that doesn't really matter. Using a ruler on your, you know, somewhat wet or dry or very wet <clears throat> painting is something that you can always do. So why not try uh, to see what it's like to use a ruler? Okay, so I put on the black paint and I haven't put on any white yet. So I could say, well, what don't I have? I don't have anything that's super light. So why don't I do a similar thing to what I did with the black and put a glob of it here and randomly, you know, uh, you can put it in several spots if you want. There's nobody saying you can't. So what I'd like you to do though is um, keep yourself from um, over mixing it so that you lose all the contrast. It's very easy to do that uh, if you take a palette knife or a silicone tool and you take this and you scrub it over the entire thing until you've lost, you know, differences in value, differences in dark and light. Um, I could easily cover up all of these marks, but I'm really not trying to do that. So um, just keep that in mind. And you can take like your Mestermeister or you could take a small brayer if you want. And what I'm doing here is something I'd like you to try no matter what palette we're using. We'll talk about color in a little bit, but for right now, uh, I, I just really want you to sort of keep things simple. So if you're using a brayer, let's just use a little one like this. Um, I have put this paint here and you can charge it like right on top of your painting. Now this is going to be somewhat transparent um, but let's figure it out. Like how transparent? Um, basically, with any paint, you can really thin it out so that it's somewhat transparent, even an opaque color, but you can also leave it sort of thick like that. Maybe you like that. So you can charge it, and you don't have to use the brayer on all four of these. Like you might say, okay, I see the brayer here. Maybe add a little bit more paint like that. And because I didn't, I didn't really charge it, Charging is when you get the whole thing even, but it can be e uh, interesting when you don't make it completely even, like, like that. So then let's say I want to put a little bit more because it's gone a little grayish, and that's because it mixed with some of the underlying marks. That's all fine. So the brayer is one thing you can use, but you can also use a tool, like your silicone tool. Or even your Mastermeister, like let's say you want to experiment with this tool. What can that do? Notice I can, um, can drag it across and notice how smooth that is. Now that can feel really good because it is so different from what's around it and it really stands out right now. So experiment with all of your tools and you're working on all four at one time. You're kind of treating the whole thing as one. So don't just pretend your borders are not there and feel free to just play. This is all about play. It's not about getting up tight. It's not about worrying about what it looks like. In fact, it should look pretty bad in some ways, but the way to uh, think about it is if you can just keep some contrast by the end of your painting, like I would say, this is pretty good contrast. I might stop now. Don't feel like you have to go forever. Um, it's not how much time you spend on these. It's exploring your tools and your materials, getting to know how they operate on, you know, this is was dry paper, right? And so now that I've spread some paint out, I've used my brayer, I put some thick paint on with a palette knife, uh, you can come in. So the Master Maestro is a tool, but we have many tools. So maybe you've got a palette knife that has a squared off edge like this. Well, you can actually draw with it. You can scrape back into it like this. Now you may not have a squared off palette knife and that's fine. You don't have to use that, but there are all kinds of things like a skewer. A skewer would work and I have bamboo skewers that everybody can use. So. Maybe you like asymmetric writing and you just want to do a bit of that. So that's another tool that you might want to experiment with. It's whatever, you know, whatever kind of fascinates you. And I haven't done any grays yet, so let's try some of that. Um, grays are going to give you um, a wider range of value. And I already have like some of these values just from the 
graphite powder that it's gonna it's gonna turn out to be that value right because you see the paper showing through but experiment with you know your grays and the grays are simply black plus white i'm just doing that for texture because i like that texture maybe i'll put some here it's fun to have thick and thin as well and how about your fingers play with your fingers notice i'm not taking this gray and mushing it all over the entire thing I'm kind of letting it have its place in this painting and, you know, maybe I can do some drawing with it like this. Just grab some of that paint and move it around so you can draw with your fingers. Just pretend you're a child, I guess would be what I would say is a great thing to try. And then if you take some wax paper, it can be deli paper, wax paper, anything like that. But anytime you've got thick paint, you can try to move that shape like this, just slightly go over it like this and move it onto another painting. So here's what I grabbed from both the white and the gray. And then you can place it elsewhere, like maybe right on top of something dark, because it will show. And just be aware of like there is wet paint nearby on these other paintings. So you want to just kind of add your monoprint. This is a monoprint. So then you get some interesting marks. Put it here. Just tap it with your hand. So you're kind of offloading some paint. You're getting some interesting marks. Now this got a little bit um, textured, so again, I can smooth that out because I wanted that to be smooth. Um, and once these dry by tomorrow, and they will dry, actually they'll dry within about four, three to four hours, they'll get tacky enough so you can work back into this. Then we can start doing some other techniques like masking, and there are a lot of things you can do. Um, depending on what stage of dryness your painting is at. But when it's super gloppy, and I'm trying to keep this from getting super gloppy. So notice I was kind of keeping the paint rather thin in the beginning. And then as time goes on, you know, you're building, you're building on that layer. So things are going to get thicker. So then I could take a little bit of the medium gray and just um, add it somewhere. So what you're trying to do is get, you know, change a change in values. And the mixtures of gray ensure that you will get that because you know you've pre-mixed them. When you start working with color, that's when they're really going to come in handy. So notice how good that looks because I don't have that value here. I can fill in some textured area and make it smooth. I'm just using my hand, maybe up here. Even just a little section that has the paint compared to the dry paper is going to look different. You want to develop a sensitivity to these minute and subtle changes in your surface. Because that's what is going to be your personal voice is how much, you know, how much is this sensitivity in here due to your voice? Well, you're in control. A lot of the things that end up in your final painting may have happened in your play stage. That's when our creativity is um, the most vibrant and alive. We're not worried about anything. We're just letting that creativity flow. So that's a really important time and that's why play is so important. So I'm trying to add a little bit of this medium gray, you know, here and there. And when you use your finger, you, know, you can make shapes, you can make dots. You can draw with it. You can go over other colors. <clears throat> you can make a grid. So maybe you can do a little grid. Take advantage of your hands as tools. So if I add dots here, because I like dots, you know, maybe I'll find another place to put some dots. You can mix any gray with another gray and get like in this case, I want a little bit lighter gray so it shows against the darker background. So I've just changed the value of some of these dots. The dots can become another cohesion factor in these paintings. If I want these to show though, notice that if I put these over something light, they will show. But if I put them over something that's the same value, 
they will not show or they will not show as well. So it's important to that. That's the whole basis of composition. You're not going to see anything unless there's contrast in value or color. If if um, all of your colors like say pretty saturated, then you're not relying on the value change. You're relying on the color change because maybe your painting is all saturated and pretty much all mid tone. That can happen too. So just think of what you've got, you know, don't think, think, but I mean, you're playing. You can just take some cold wax medium and then any color becomes thinner. So I can thin out that gray now, it's just about transparent. So that's another thing you might play with is thinning out your paints. Even a gray can be pretty transparent if you add cold wax to it like that. So even now, because I've set up, you know, some large shapes, some small shapes, some dark, some light, some curvilinear, some rectilinear, there's uh, wet media, dry media, there's a lot of contrast going on, there's even a bit of color just due to those pastels. Um, it's just really fun. There are other tools now when you've got these wet sections, play with those tools. You may have something like this or something like this. These are just tools that you can get at the local hardware store and people who lay tile will have something like this. I like this one because each edge has a different type of width between these marks. And so you can kind of play with that. Like maybe you want to have a section of this thicker paint have a mark. That can be kind of cool. Maybe you experiment with that. Now's the time because you've got wet paint. Um, it's going to make the biggest impact where you've got the thickest paint. So um, move this around. Maybe I'll come here. That's kind of cool right there. And you never know. That could become a very important part. I can hold this up closer. But something that small, I don't know if you can see it, but just there are those little marks from the tool. And that becomes very cool. So I would just say, um, yes, you're playing, but don't be in a huge rush because the whole point of these stages is to go for like, again, these contrasts, light and dark, black and white, curvilinear, rectilinear, textured pattern. So my dots are like a pattern and they just feel different. Uh, you might have other tools. You might have different types of palette knives, like this one here is a very unusual one. It's got a very pointy top, you can see here. It's a new one I got, and I mean, I don't know, I've never used this before, but um, I'm assuming that you can sort of draw with it, just like you would a pencil, but unlike a pencil, you're not going to leave a mark behind, so that becomes a nice drawing tool. Uh, you can, and again, it's all experimental. Like, what if I do something like this? That makes an interesting mark, kind of like a pattern. When you get a new tool, you often don't know what it can do, so you just kind of let it have its way. So this would kind of be a really nice um, more uh, just simple palette, right? Just black and white and a few little pastels here and there and I would just say once you get to this part and you don't have to feel like all of your paper has to be covered at all because we're going to keep working on these and when we do masking you know it's really nice to have some thick paint and some super thin paint maybe you've got some paper exposed but that's all fine because the paper's white and the white of your paper is is you know can be very valuable because it's it's going to be very high key. And if you go really dark, then perhaps the paper is going to be your lightest light, and then you can go in and always add white paint to it. So that's fine. Uh, but don't don't feel like you have to finish this four square today. This is really just getting it started, and getting it started means thinking about contrast. And if you just think about contrast, or just ask, you know, what don't I have, um, then that can be really um, a very useful thing to help you play, uh, to help you not think. Now, I could also go in with one of these dryer textiles 
That is the cool thing about mark making materials is that now I notice the paint kind of resisted here. I'm just noticing that. And if I draw back into it, you see, I can draw right into it. That's cool. Wipe off the pastel and, you know, like this here, I can restate that. So I can draw right on top of the wax. So just dry pastels. It's kind of delicate though, what these are. But this just becomes another layer. And I like adding color in this way. So I might do that. But again, I only have black and white on this particular palette. The only color is coming from the dry media. So I would just say, take your time, enjoy the process, and uh, keep in mind that when your painting is this, in, in the beginning stage, you're only gonna get to go so far before the paint becomes unworkable, then stop. But you know what you don't wanna do is take any tool like a brayer or a palette knife or um, your finger and like, you know, come in here and annihilate all the contrasts because I could easily do that right now. I could take this and rub it until the entire thing becomes a massive gray. But I'd rather see like the thick and thin, the gray and the white, the black and the white, the dots, the, the text, the marks I made carefully. So you're building history um, of a lot of contrasts. And by doing that in the play stage, there's going to be so much like you're building your shot, you're throwing stuff into your shopping cart. And from that, you're going to be able to find a lot of little areas that you really want to feature. Like this could become a feature right here. Maybe these marks become a feature later, or maybe just this little texture here. You just never quite know. So let these set up. Uh, we're going to dry these and we'll come back. Okay. So that's how far we got right now on this one. 